do not interfere with other fish. Stock five white ammer per acre when weeds are only a slight problem. For moderate problems, stock 10 to 15 per acre. And if your pond is choked with weeds, stock up to 20 per acre. If bass are in the pond, make sure the grass carp are at least eight inches long or longer. Otherwise, your weed eaters could wind up as lunch for their larger neighbors. Also, as grass carp get large, usually in five to seven years, they will no longer eat much and may need to be stocked again if weeds start to reappear. Anytime you see new weed growth, you probably should add three to five more grass carp per acre. Stocking grass carp means you will need to build a barrier across the emergency spillway. A spillway barrier stops the grass carp from swimming out of the pond during heavy rains. Be sure to keep the spillway barrier clear of trash so that it will not collapse or wash out. For information on the proper construction of a spillway barrier, contact your county extension office. Once your pond is built and stocked and fertilized, it's time to think about keeping the fish populations in balance. This requires a delicate hand and a bit of self-control. Do not fish your pond during the first year after stocking. Bass harvest, in particular, must be carefully controlled every year, especially in small ponds, because bass are often very easy to catch. Take out too many, and the pond can be thrown out of balance. There are many ways for this to occur. In one type of out-of-balance pond, there are too few bass and too many brim. This usually occurs when the bass have been overfished. When there are too many brim, the bass are no longer able to prevent the brim from eating their eggs during spawning season so the bass population dips even lower. Also, when there are too many brim, they don't get very big because there's just not enough food to go around. At this point, the fishing is ruined, and usually the fish must be partially or totally renovated. But have the pond checked by a qualified fisheries biologist before starting renovation. A good bass limit for the first year of fishing is 25 pounds per acre in fertilized ponds or 10 pounds per acre in unfertilized ponds. Bluegill can be fished more heavily. Four to five pounds of bluegill can be removed for each pound of bass removed. Keep good records. Catching bass is most of the fun, so release them to catch them another day. Once the limit is reached, preferably over several months, start throwing back all bass that are caught. Remember, these are only general recommendations. Ponds vary greatly, so keep good records and proceed cautiously. There's another common type of out-of-balance pond. Too many small bass, very few small bluegill, and some large bluegill. While the large bluegill do spawn and produce young bluegill, there are too few of these that reach intermediate size. The fry that are hatched are eaten rapidly by the many small bass. This has two effects. One, the small bass are not left with enough of a sustained food supply to grow, so they do not grow. Two, few young bluegill are left to mature and become adults. If you're catching a few big bluegill and a lot of small bass, all about the same size, your problem is more than likely crowded bass. You may be able to correct this pond balance problem by removing large numbers of small bass. It's a good idea to review your harvest records every year. If you have doubts about the condition of the pond, then you need to run a balance check. To check balance requires seining. During early summer, sane several shallow areas of the pond with a 15-foot okay, minnow seine. If you catch both bass fingerlings spawned during March to May and recently hatched bluegill fry, your pond is probably in balance. If you don't find bass fingerlings or bluegill fry, but you do find a lot of three to five inch bluegills, your pond is probably out of balance and you may need to change your management or renovate. But have your pond checked by a qualified fisheries biologist and get his or her recommendation first. At this point, most pond owners want to know, is there anything else I can do to make my fish grow faster or make them easier to catch? Well, there are a couple of things you can do. To make your fish grow faster, you could feed them a commercial fish food. Bluegill and catfish will readily eat commercial fish feeds. Feed in the same place each time and feed at least five days a week, but feed no more than 10 pounds per acre per day. If you feed your fish, you will probably not need to fertilize but use your Secchi disc to check the bloom and fertilize only as necessary. You can also build artificial reefs for your pond. These reefs can be constructed of brush, wood, concrete blocks, tires, and other materials. Reefs do not produce more fish, but attract fish for fishermen. Finally, as a pond manager, you might want to know, what problems might I run into? 
Oxygen depletions are probably the most common and severe pond problem. These can kill most or all the fish in the pond. Oxygen depletions can be caused by several conditions, a turnover, a bloom die-off, or the rapid decaying of weeds after a chemical treatment, or if large quantities of animal manure washes into the pond. In any of these conditions, the oxygen concentration in the pond drops, watercolor turns dark brown, black, or milky, and the fish come to the surface gasping for air. As a pond manager, seek help from a qualified fisheries biologist and aerate. Aeration is accomplished by mixing air and water together so the oxygen will be absorbed into the water. Water pumps and tractor-powered or electrical aerators can be used to increase the oxygen concentration in the pond. Aeration must be continued until normal oxygen concentrations return to the pond. If caught in time, good aeration can save some or all of the fish. Properly managing a fish pond may take some extra time, but that's a small price to pay for the good times and good eating that come your way today and for years to come. More information about managing fish ponds can be found in publication ANR 577, Management of Recreational Fish Ponds, available from your county extension agent's office. And whenever you can, take your kids fishing for the fun and excitement of it. The preceding program was produced by the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service.